the greatest pop punk record of all time. I I stand on that. I will not back down from that. Dude, the reason that I'm going to call it the greatest pop punk record of all time is for this reason right here. All right, dude. Let's go, man. I am kind of excited to talk about an album that I didn't think I would be that excited to talk about. Uh, oh, man. So did you get to listen to this album at all this week? Uh, I listened to it once. I don't really need to. You know what I mean? Like okay. I, it's pretty embedded, you know. Right, right. So, okay. It's time to talk about the greatest pop punk record of all time. I I stand on that. I will not back down from that. Dude, the reason that I'm going to call it the greatest pop punk record of all time is for this reason right here. The whole week, I just kept putting it off listening to it because I was like, dude, I don't need to hear it. Like you said, it's embedded in my brain. I don't know. I don't need to hear this record. I know all the songs. I sat down today to put together some equipment that I bought. And I was like, all right, time to listen to this. I turned on the speakers. They're real loud right behind me. I got a good stereo in here. Dude, it took maybe half a second of Dumpweed. And I was like, okay, I'm back in. I'm back in. I was like, I'm back in, bro. I'm back in. I literally have a video of me putting together this thing. And I'm like looking up, singing almost every single word to almost every single song. Dude, this record is amazing. I don't, I, I can't get sick of it. Like I don't like if you tell me like hey do you want to go listen to it, it's kind of hard to get motivated right. But as soon as it starts, I'm like dude I go transportation back in time to 1999. So what we're talking about if you haven't figured out yet is Blink 182, Enema of the State, June 1st 1999. It'll be 25 years old in like Jeez. 10 days, dude. 12 songs, 35 minutes of pop punk perfection. Uh, on that date, I will be doing a live stream. We're going to listen to it. Artist Spotlight will be Blink-182, Enema of the State. Uh, this album is so good that it's got like three or four songs that have been massively overplayed, and I still like listening to them. Uh, again, it's a little hard to want to jump in, but as soon as I've jumped in, I I I'm enjoying myself. You say jump in, too. It's... It goes so quickly. You, you read those times Bro. of 38 minutes. This album is, it kicks, especially you talk about the, the notable songs and all that. They come at the end towards the, towards the bottom of the album. So you start out with a lot of these funner songs that uh, I, I think are the, the heart of what, what makes this just um, a great album. Cause again, we, there, these three songs that were massive pop hits, like not, not rock hits, just massive, massive um, pop hits. Cause yeah, this album was music in general. Yeah. It was just huge. But like, you kind of feel like had they not have selected those three and selected every other song on the album, those also would have been massive, massive hits. There's not, I would say, in my opinion, the lowest point on the album is probably its biggest hit. And I, I remember saying that even um, at the time because these, these songs All the are, small things? Yeah, I think it's the weakest song on the album. And I, I've thought what? that for a long time, yeah. Hold on, let and, me look at this. But again, it's contrasted yeah, I mean, with the rest of the album, like contrasted to what else. I mean, I like it better than a bunch of songs, but it, but I but I do understand your 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 point that you're making, and I I'm not going to agree with it, but I'm also not going to argue against it really. I mean, all the small things work really works as a radio hit. It's very single longable. It's it's all of those sort of things. Last song they recorded for the album too. It was their oh it wow. Was their, it was their throw in song, wanting to do a Ramones type of thing. <laughs> And they said, let's, you know, let's put in this song that, and it's, if you've ever played the song on, on guitar Damn, bass, it's it does sound kind of like a remote. Da, da, da. It's just slowed down a little bit, but if it's it was a, faster. Do, it would do, sound do, like do, remote. Do, 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 do. Yeah. It's exactly has all that. And most huh. of their chord progressions are like, again, a band that's not a Ramones core band at all, but all of their chord progressions throughout the first part of their career are really all that same do 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 you know that sort of Ramones progression yeah I just wrote a Ramones course song like the, oh, yeah like the like a Blitzkrieg bop right there right <laughs> out of you but uh, yeah, and the, and so all, the, all the small things is kind of 
that you know what i mean and that was and it's funny then that was like you know the third song that i remember coming out I, I remember i remember catching this album at the at the time um and it's because what's my age again was like the biggest song like ever when it whenever it came out and it was right it was a little racy it was a little fun it, it again it really just it fits so well though they this band and this album fit really well into the time period that they that they burst into Bro, like, i don't know how much hit, that lightning struck for this band yeah, like because think of everything that's going on, uh, whether it's the type of the movies that were coming out, like those teen comedies that they were always in soundtrack for. You have the uh, the X Games really rising up in this part, and they were they were big in the skate scene and the San Diego scene. So they're coded. So all these big big pieces, and then the other music that already came, all these big pieces of culture were kind of uh, coalescing around them. Also, and the Donnas from earlier were a part of this. There was a specific move within MTV in the, in the late 90s to go away from the boy bands because the boy bands were kind of falling off a little bit and they realized they needed to replace their album, their audience with what what are the young kids going to be listening to now? And so the calculation right. by MTV was that the public had moved on from boy bands and into punk rock bands. And they weren't that far off. I think they were absolutely correct in, in how that um, was going to go and how it facilitated it, which is funny about this album. So this album is very colorful. I think blue is just the, the sort of general theme, you know, red, white, and blue really is the, the theme color. The reason why but the it's next a specific album, shade of blue though, it's the blink it's not blue. Like a yeah. pale blue. You know, it's like a blink blue. Yeah. It's some, someone even did a mock-up of some Jordan ones with the enema colors one day. Like those look amazing. Um, yes, but that is why the next album has a black cover. They dressed in black the whole time because it was so colorful, so digestible, so bubblegum. People would casually, without saying it as an insult, would refer to Blink-182 as a boy band, as a boy group. Which, again, this band that is playing... They that were, is sing- are. It, yeah, but it, but to them, if we're like, wait a minute, we're the band that's making fart songs and playing no effects covers, and like that's what we're, we don't even know how to play our instruments. But yeah, it, now, functionally, were they a boy band? Yes, they that's that well, they, they did very, very much serve that role that a boy band would serve. They had a, a di- slightly different audience, but not much, you know what I mean? It's not, it, it, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. yes, that's ac- that's accurate. I can't, yeah, yes, you're correct, but this. Uh, I don't want to just like shift the, the, the conversation here, but I have right. to, man. This album is special. It's a timeless record. Every time I think I'm over it, I get pulled right back in. That's crazy to me that an album could be this good. It's it's one of those things that when you hear uh when you hear Dude Ranch, and you're like, okay, Dude Ranch is easily the best blink album. Within like two songs of Enema, you're like, oh my goodness, dude, how could they have done a better like that band created a better record is kind of hard to comprehend when you're just looking at it from the perspective of dude ranch right the addition of travis barker some more money and like the production of this record is where it's special because they slowed some of the songs down which i don't necessarily like but it works listen to like uh all the small things the song that you said is beaten to death right what about that song is notable to you uh i don't know if i just like the the speed and the energy okay so one of the things about that song that is incredibly uh important in my opinion is that if you're somewhere and you know that ambient noise they have at the beginning of the song yeah okay without that ambient noise ambient noise excuse me and that uh hi-hat uh snare drum to cut like that 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 sets that song apart so when you're somewhere dude you can hear that little intro noise and know exactly what's fixing to come dude it's that kind of detail that sets this album apart from any other record i've ever heard because like i'll be at work dude at this freaking theater and i'll hear that noise and go oh blink's fixing to come on I've heard that song two million times, but I don't need to hear it again. But at work, man, what else do I want to hear? I'd rather hear that than almost anything else. Yeah, the the the, the swell from the end of Adam's song, which again, st- and so yes, 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 yes. That's what it is. Thank you. This, Sorry, this album though really from. really goes together as an album like that. Um, it really does. The, the, the songs uh, tend to bleed in together. The drum fills, and you mentioned it. There's two major upgrades that they make on this album. The one that everyone knows about, obviously, is Travis Barker. And so that's why this is also like the last really super pop punky album that they ever did, because their sound changes 
because of Travis. Like Travis is the one that right. pulls them into all their different directions. I think Mark and Tom, although wanting to go in different directions, would have probably just made this album over and over and over again had had it just been them um and right. Scott. The other I one think they I should talk, have. <laughs> yeah, that might have that might have been good from the other one, and I talk about it all the time, was the entrance of the legendary Jerry Finn. Now, uh we uh, a couple weeks ago, Steve Albini uh passed away. Someone who mixed right, and produced, Steve Albini. engineered, worked on everything. Well, also someone else who has passed on is Jerry Finn, who's very similar to Steve Albini in that like his credits are huge. Uh, his production credits aren't that big. This is, I always say this is his crown jewel of everything he did produce. Because Enema of the State is such a perfect sounding record on top of it. It really dude, songs, it sounds all that. so See, pretty. Like, it, it's just like, what do you, taking what you have on Dude Ranch and putting that into like a, a super production kind of thing. And this is what you get. Like some bands, you know, they, if you, if you produce them, they're going to sound, they won't sound the same or they won't like, this is clearly still whatever a blink 182 is and now it's hard to say that now because like you just know what they are and whatever it is it's still very much that on enema <clears> of the state it sounds cleaner and crisper than it did even on any other albums after that because they, they they started more experimentation after and stuff so it was never going to sound as clean crisp and pure as it ever was on enema of the state but they are simple punk rock songs that you go in and there's so many layers to them and so many little different parts of production parts for we talked about like watching the Rick Beato videos on these where he, he pulls out the keyboard in, awesome. in all the small things that you can't you can't even hear it on the recording, but you can you can pull it out deeply in the recording that's just thicking it up them doing counter harmonies lyrically underneath the stuff that they're singing and having them do it so it's in their tone their intonation having mark shift from the fender basses to the jaguar basses this is all like that jerry finn stuff um again that's like ranch, that's like very specific calculated moves dude ranch is a a very like dude ranch is an album that i think is a upper end album because of those songs are really really good but kind of an album that a punk rock band would make i don't think most punk rock bands right. would just have the intuition or to the know-how or the time or the money to make something like anyway. and, it, and again it's little stuff like Oh, the the guitar's not going to play her, and just the bass is going to play her, and that's how verse two is going to be different than verse one, and just those little things about making a record that Jerry Finn, he had a real affinity. You mean all for the it. small things? All the small things, yes, <laughs> all those little details. Sorry, that's dude. actually, I think, it was Jerry's thing is he had an affinity of how do I make this music that is supposed to be really generic, so to speak, and how do oh, I make it great. unique, and how do I make it time? And, and like Rick Beato said. This is one of the greatest rock records, just full stop of all time. The way it's like, it's a perfect rock record, big choruses, the, the things you want, the hits, the right amount of ballads. Dude. It is, it's kind of a perfect record. So when I was listening to it, I had it on Spotify and all of a sudden the mighty, mighty boss tones came on and I was like, what? That's how fast this record is. Is that, that's how, that's how easy it is to listen to is that all of a sudden I was listening to a different band because the album was over with. And I was like, but I wasn't quite ready to be done with that yet. Like I, I almost put it back on, but I was in the middle of doing stuff. I, I couldn't really stop what I was doing, but like, honestly, had I been sitting here editing video or something, I would have probably been like, nah, let's, let's, let's do that one more time. And it's, it's not a hard record to listen to. Uh, one thing that you said a minute ago that I want to touch on for a minute. Uh, mm. That sounded super pervy. Um, mm. <laughs> one thing I want to touch on for a minute, Rob, these nuts uh oh, bro i'm never gonna grow up man i tried that shit one time uh so the addition of travis barker into blink 182 changed them in a way that i don't think a lot of people really think about much because they think oh, oh oh uh uh mark wanted to go this direction tom wanted to go this direction and they never really mentioned travis barker but do you think that Travis Barker's to blame for the direction that Blink went as far as like getting them out of punk rock almost altogether? They got yeah. they went like straight up emo, almost like to like electronic music to a certain degree for years. They've never really gone back to it. On honestly, uh, is he yeah. is he to blame for that? Yeah, very very much. So. And I think if you ask them what like what their sound is not now like just currently but what the blink sound is they would say it is that sort of like that they they are happy with um with how that went no and it's 100 percent from him so you look at like part of why travis started the transplants is he said he wanted to get punk rockers into hip-hop rhythms and i think okay. he, i think he actually kind of accomplished that a little bit with blink 182 um as well but the overall the moods and the tone that they, they all wanted to do it 
that's why again this is the last album of like purity that they have yeah um, i can't imagine that, that they didn't want to and still did but like he was the catalyst correct yeah yeah well so he not only the catalyst but the capabilities too like he, he right, just had different right. so when, when they talk about where they wanted to go i think mark just wanted to lean into them being even more of like a bubble gummy pop um i guess it's the stuff that would kind of feature him i mean to let's be right. honest with you um, stuff he's good at yeah tom wanted them to be a heavier band a more of a, a more of a hard post hardcore type of band a lot of the stuff you sort of heard with boxcar racer and, and boxcar racer is where i was headed yeah boxcar yeah racer. that's the direction he wanted to go to and travis you know wanted this this completely different totally like almost trippy sort of version um of the band and, and they have talked about like travis was so much more knowledgeable on both like music history and music theory and all of this stuff than they did so as soon as he joined the band they really took the lead from him in how like, right mark and tom still wrote the majority of the songs to start out with but and they've talked about this now the process is mark and tom basically send uh mark uh travis and mark or tom and mark geez they send basically <laughs> demos to travis and travis cut literally that kind of chops and screws it for weeks okay. and weeks and weeks and then sends them back to him like what the song is gonna be like so he has very much influence uh over the sound i don't think it was necessarily on display on his other than it was just the quality of him was so much on display and the stuff that jerry could do to these songs yeah. was very much on his i think his influence comes out two albums later when you have i would agree yeah i, I not think only that's the, accurate. the the shift in emo because not like he was this big emo guy necessarily um but that's sort of no but late... he put complex like strategy into like making uh generic simple songs yeah like, so he, like turned, the, he turned it into something completely different like that 03 album has a rhythm interlude you know what i mean like you just right, didn't have right, that right uh, on, well, on pop punk albums you know so he he brought that but but, but that rhythm changed to, to your broader question i think really brought about all the the permission for all the tonal changes in like if they wanted to do a song with robert smith of the cure which they did on the 2003 album he wasn't going to come on there and guest on all the small things necessarily right. for that, that, type that of is style. a very very good point now i don't particularly care for all that but i understand as a from an artist standpoint wanting to do that of course right there's a couple of points that have to be talked about though one is the talent dude what a lottery ticket winning lottery ticket you got to get travis barker to join your band because he was doing stuff like the aquabats bro that guy needs to be very far away from that kind of music <laughs> and be in just just so he can spread his wings like i'm not trying to talk crap about the aquabats dude i learned to listen to the aquabats in late, later blink 182 albums but you know the the amount of professionalism and if you would go based on uh the eye test you would go oh that's the punk rock guy but in reality it's probably uh mark it's probably tom actually is is you think so i think it's between mark mark and tom are but like, I, but like, I, my point is, is that Travis looks like the guy that would be Mark, the more punk rock guy. Yeah, Mark, he's probably got the more knowledge on it, but he's he's very Mark and much Tom are, are you and I basically? Uh, to, to yeah, they, that's true. They, that's true. They, they they would be you and I. Yeah, Travis is no Travis always had because he had, he had the mohawk. He had, he was the first one with the tattoos. He's covered in tattoos. He man. had that, and and he has a lot of punk rock tattoos on him though specifically too. And it's not like he wasn't a punk rocker, not from punk rock scene. No, no, no. no he very much is, but he's he also just a had, musician. He, he, he had that interest again and i i think it's it's funny to say because you don't associate blink with hip but it was specifically and not hip-hop always but like hip-hop makes sense because that's where rhythms come so like we, we'll talk we talk about these but uh tommy lee the reason why tommy lee has a hip-hop record is hip-hop kind of appeals to drummers i think like yes the beats and the rhythm and all that stuff it's something they feel uh i i think i don't know if a creative i need to have a creative but like the rhythm is at the forefront of hip that is the musicianship in hip-hop is the rhythm Very I think much. guys like travis um really understood how rhythm creates a song and can add to the color of the song and all that. so that's why he wanted to bring in the hip-hop um beats and he did it in a few different ways he did it with the way of changing of blink's sound he did it with the transplants with the tra just transparent where i'm gonna bang out a hip-hop sounding beat but, and, and there's gonna be hip-hop like lyrics and stuff on top of it well tim armstrong is very uh aware of that world and i wouldn't say like entangled into it but he's aware of it and he's like i would say he's the kind of guy that stands in the back of like this at a show in that world he's like okay okay i like this i can dig he, this he whereas like travis well, is probably yeah. yeah travis is like in the mix it's a weird uh connection and relationship that punk rock and hip-hop have together we've always kind of had it mainly because i think they're both birthed of like rebellion and like for for the like the desire and the the need to 
uh, fix a lot of problems in society and with lawmakers and, 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 and police, right? Uh, so that's where these connections are made. So then you have these musicians that are interested in both sides and you get wild, wild music out of it. And I, I, I like a lot of it. Some of it I don't care for, but Travis Barker is an amazing musician. I just wanted to point out the fact that like his musical ability is, is far above, I would say the other two guys in the band. Um, I don't and, mean to and, sound like a jerk. Uh, and they would, it, and it, they would say, they would say that as well. Like they would say that yeah. by far. Like, so, like they always say they're the lucky guy. They're the, they're the cliche lucky guys that kind of knew how to play their instruments. And that awesome. undersells them a little bit because they can write. They've always been able to just write really good songs. That is. No, they're very good at writing catchy music for sure. That is, for but, sure. you know, like you know, Mark's not the best bass player. Tom's not the best guitar player. This is that. Travis is the best drummer. Like, uh, right, you know, Tra- right, Travis right, is right. All so, those things. And I, I think that's where this album. Like, you listen to some of these songs, just the drum tracks, and it almost sounds like the entire song. Like, it's amazing how much no. activity he's doing. I yeah, I one million percent agree with that. I just wanted to to ask that specific question because I think that I, I thought about it honestly in the first song I was because I, okay so I have a pretty good stereo now before you know 10 years ago five years ago three years ago I didn't have this good of a stereo and I was able to like turn it up quite a bit and fool with the equalizer a little bit and I I, I paused it turned around leaned over turned the treble down a little bit turned the mids up and then I turned the bass up a just a hair because I wanted to get all the drum sounds that I was, because I just, I, I heard it so clearly on this album. Like, I think that, uh, is he to blame for things? Though The way, I'll, the way I'll, I'll come around on this on this question is I'll say that uh, he was so good at it and he is so talented that it actually became too much of a good thing with their more most recent album. And his production was, like they needed somebody to step in and help, but he's so good at what he does. He's so trusted that they were like, here, you do this then. And I, I think they would have probably benefited from having somebody else in there going, hey, man, maybe not so much on this. And hey, tone this down a little bit because it does sound like the Travis Barker show in their new record. So uh, I do I, I do think that he's to blame for the way that they ended up and the sounds that they make now. Now, to blame, that could be taken as a negative or a positive. I just, I'm just saying, uh, is he the catalyst Credit to their sound man. chain? Yeah, yeah, you can look at it any way you want. I'm just saying, is he the reason for their sound changing the way it did? And I would say, yes, he absolutely Let is. Let me just interject how funny it is that, like, when I was, this album came out when I was, like, in the seventh grade, right? So I was pretty familiar with it, like, just generally. And we used to, like, you know, we thought Travis was cool because he wouldn't talk in interviews. And he was the most low-profile one of all that. I love how now he's the biggest celebrity of all three. Isn't and that he's, weird? like, the guy who, like, determines their musicianship. He's the most in tune with music of all of them because he works with all these modern art. It's so, so funny that he's, like, this massive mogul dude now, and he used to be the quiet guy that wouldn't talk um, from Lake That's Lake how you get too. there, like, bro. That's so funny. Shut up. That's why I'll never get there because I can't shut up. <laughs> you just uh, stay where you're at. <laughs> but, uh, dude, Travis Parker rules, man. I, I really appreciate that guy's musicianship and talent and uh, ear for, like, uh, quality sounds. I mean, it's really... Can you imagine how difficult it is to be in his position? And especially if you're like, hey, we're going to get together and write this new album. And hey, Travis, we, we want you to produce it. I'd be like, man, hell no. I don't want to be the, the 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 reason that people are pissed or the reason people celebrate. Let me just be a part of the band, please. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give my, you know, expertise where it's needed, but I don't want to be... I don't want that kind of pressure is really what it is. It's a cowardly move on my part, but I'll, I'll, I'll just have to deal with it. He feels like the first like real legend double career guy out of pop punk. Um, you know, what I mean? like, like Billy Joe and those guys, they're still kind of going as they're like who they were. Like there's almost like this Dr. Dre kind of like, he's the hip hop guy in the eighties. Then he's the producer in the nineties. There's that kind of thing that Travis has to him as well. I think he's the only guy really from like, that still kind of could be identified yeah. that came from punk or that, that sort of has that, that cash like, in pop culture. Tim yeah. But, first, I mean, but he's like, he's like, he walked so Travis could run. Yeah, and and uh, Tim Tim may have done more specific work in the music industry. Uh, tra- Travis was a lot more famous, obviously, than than. Tim yeah, that's was. where I was kind of wrestling with it, but I, I they're, still think they're, they're they're both guys though. If you want a hit record, if you're anywhere you know adjacent to punk or even, Bro, it's, if you can get one rap, of those two guys on your song, you're them, all right. Put them put them on your thing. Uh, well, that's why uh, the transplants were so fucking good. Yeah, and so original, <laughs> dude. How many? Oh, dude, look. How often can you say that you hear a sound that you've never heard before? Not very often. And I think and they Tim Armstrong own that was still. Di- like they, they well, still Tim Armstrong that, right? did that shit twice, bro. Like Rancid and the Transplants 
shit operation ivy dude he's a triple threat man he, he did that three i mean actually i never really thought about that dude like how many people can say that they changed music three different times not many man tim armstrong he did it with operation ivy then he did it with rancid and then he did it with the transplants and i am not saying this at all with like any kind of like i'm being very serious he, he really did change shit three different times man that's crazy i never really thought about it like in, that in three but, different uh, decades too yeah in three, three different decades uh wow that's crucial man that is a wild statement uh yeah dude this is you know the only other band you were saying that they're still holding that spot for like that unique sound you know the only band that i've ever heard that i thought oh man this could remind me of the transplants a little bit there's actually two one's like over in europe uh, rat boy he has a lot of that similar sound in his music but co-defendants are the mm. closest thing that i've yeah. ever heard to a transplant song so and they're still not the same yeah but it's the well, closest yeah. thing that i've ever heard because you're like okay well they 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 combined the punk rock and hard rock with hip-hop but it's yeah. not new metal it's not a, you know it's hard to explain right it, right like it's it, a weird really, weird there's nothing a lot there's nothing really you could other than who's involved that you would say is overtly punk rock necessarily about the transplants you just you kind of you they fit in there with it because nothing else really would would sound like like being told that they're punk rock doesn't seem like crazy but like you wouldn't come to that conclusion yeah. necessarily i think on your own well the, i i definitely called them punk rock hip-hop I, I that's like Codefendants, I think, fit in the same category, and I think that maybe if there's another couple of bands that come out that actually do something with it, you might have a subgenre pop up that's like that you can thank Tim Armstrong for again. I'm like, surprised it hasn't. The way the way hip hop has kind of taken over as the pop well, music and has infected like all the other. I mean, it's it's been parts of punk rock there, but not like this of really like a, a not strip, but like a more hardcore type of punk rock that's directly okay. associated with it. You know, if you're gonna start. A band like that right and like your idea is i want to do something that sounds like this and they go okay what are the bands that you want to try to emulate or or replicate sound like whatever you want to call it and your answer is the transplants or fucking co-defendants dude like <laughs> i know that co-defendants aren't as big as transplant transplants but that's dude that's sam king and chesky ramos dude like that's like those are that that's big that's that's talent so that's a daunting task is my point. Like I wouldn't, I'd be like, you know what? I'll just play a punk band, bro. I'm not even trying to get embarrassed right now. Like I don't, I don't want to make a fool of myself because the people that did it just so happened to be the best people that could have done something like that. That's, that's what makes it so crazy is that mm -hmm. that's the reason it's not being replicated because it's like, well, dude, the best guys already did that. So, uh, and anybody watching this, if there's a band out there that sounds kind of like that, that I don't know about, dude, let me know. I'd love yeah, to hear put it. Them out. Yeah. I think that 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 you know oh, this is gonna sound crazy, bro. The one band that if they were still around could probably pull it off would probably be the Clash. They 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 as much as I don't care about their later music, they touched into a lot of genres, and that is exactly why Tim does it. So there's my tip of the cap to the band that I always uh, just kind of go eh. <laughs> like I, I'm not trying to. Yeah, bro, I'm exhausted right now. That was a crazy like energetic uh emotional conversation about a lot of music that we haven't the donna's we've never even talked about no but the blink album dude like we've talked about it a number of times but i don't think we really i don't think we really said the same stuff like we, we reviewed it and talked about the songs we liked but dude this album is impactful man think about all the bands that if Enema of the state didn't come out sounding exactly the way it sounded that just wouldn't even exist there's a lot of them dude well i wonder what i i think about this a lot because what would that early 2000s scene have sounded like because the the green day stuff had glory only, really though i think it needed this album though like okay because you're not the, wrong the, and, and and again that 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 may be the case but like even if you go to that first album that comes out before this in 97 it's very like rough i mean it's still trying to be poppy but it's uh it, had, it hadn't figured it out like i i, I heard, i've heard blink one time be referred to as hardcore pop and i that was such Whoa. a good descriptor of what that is a good is. descriptor that is like perfect yeah to describe uh exactly what it is they just 
yeah, they were they were so good at at doing both things about writing the these really good um, songs that again in any other context you would just consider a straight up uh, punk song, but they were able to present it to you as like this sort of pop music in the way that it would be palatable to like you know your aunt who had the 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 CD or the or the tape, um, and also it's not that far removed from like what they were doing. Um, on Dude Ranch, and again, they didn't have to get a bunch of hate because they had already got there with Dude Ranch. You know what I mean? Like this, so it's not like uh, if you had a if you thought Blink One Eighty Two had left you or you had abandoned them, like it was already it had already ended for you um, with uh, with Dude Ranch. Which again, the late nineties just doesn't have. We talked about them with the Donnas too. It doesn't. Green Day had to go through what they went through and Man. sort of open all the floodgates for everyone. And then it, it just mattered. It only yeah. really mattered to like the like. It's not like Blink had to get asked in every interview what it was like to leave the punk scene the way the uh, you know Green Day had to had mm. to go through. So I, I really wonder though the people who don't like um, this who didn't like this album or don't like Blink. I always, I always wonder like have you ever actually like listened to it? Do you not like the idea of it or do you not like it I... as a whole? I would venture to say that there's going to be a fair amount of people that are going to say that they don't like it. And then if you had to ask them with some truth serum, have you ever listened to the whole album? I I, I would say pretty confidently that it's going to be like a 50, 50 split on who hadn't even heard the whole record. Mm. But I, I, I do know people that say that this album isn't good that I'm pretty sure haven't actually heard it. And all they heard was the singles and were like, eh, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like there's punk rock guys that have never heard this record. I can guarantee it. Yeah. Because uh, so I've, I've, I wonder about this. that when they, when they just like, okay, if you're just going to have a problem with the concept as a whole, then it's kind of not worth having the conversation because you've already made right. your mind. So why, why are we going right. to have this conversation? But, um, I, I now I do understand if your standard is for it just to be like punk rock, uh, straightforward. Then yeah, this wouldn't meet your threshold by by a, quite a quite and, a yeah. Wide and margin. I wasn't saying that as like a you know condemnation of their you know personality or whatever. It's just it's just I do know people that are like, no, nah, it ain't for me. It sucks. And I'm like, but how do you heard it all? They're like, I don't care about right. you because I, I feel like that about some stuff too. That's why I went, again, like unless unless you just don't have unless you just don't like the idea of the band or just say to don't like the band um, from then then I also get that. But it, but it's like man, these these songs are. For what this is, these songs are about as good as they could be, and they're well, they're done so well. Like the, like a lot of that stuff that that this came out of, even their own stuff, even like Dude Ranch. Like as much as I love Dude Ranch, like there's kind of there's some songs and there's some moments that are really like overstuffed and over bloated. And it, it just it speaks to what you can do with the spirit and energy and songwriting mixed with the competency of production that an album like this has. Without again, I always want to say they didn't they were not defanged. Like if you don't like the fangs they had, it's cause you didn't like the fangs they had, but you, you know, right. th those are just the fangs that the fangs that they did. <laughs> so they were not, they, they found a way to really not, you know, def it, it was not a defanging of them. It was a polishing for sure. And maybe like that polish, then that sheen might just be a well, little too much for people. It's a combination of two things. It is. Well, actually it's sorry. I thought I was hearing something. Uh, it's a combination of three things, actually. I said two things. It's a good new cleaning, good polishing. They also slowed the tempo down a fair amount, mm. right? But it's also the addition of Travis Barker. I have to say it again. His talent, the way he plays the drums on this record is so far superior to Dude Ranch that is kind of insulting to even compare the two records because they're very different. I, I feel bad. I've and I've thought this for a long time. I feel bad for Scott Rayner just because oh, pe yeah. people think was he was a terrible was drummer because Travis succeeded him. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that, that is also fine. like like no Blink was now, was lucky and he was unlucky at the same time. <laughs> right. Now um <sighs> did some people say well he limited the bat. Okay. True. Maybe did he really though? Well, How do no, because well, we're saying that they expanded their sound and and were able to do all these other things because they had Travis. Yeah, but they also didn't yes. want to do it. We already discussed that too. They wanted to sound the same, and or at least Mark did. <laughs> you know, wait. Right. Yeah, yeah Mark. No. Mark did. 
No, but so then again, you would say that that they were able to to expand and build their. And I'm not just talking about the the complete sound change, but actually the like the way they were able to just have uh, again some of the slower tempos, which comes with the better yeah. drummer and the way to, to fill in those songs. So they they had a, that, like, yeah. like like yeah. I'm not gonna say Travis wasn't good. I, we just spent 30 minutes telling you about how good Travis was. I don't think that means like, a, some people act like Scott was just hitting the tin can though when they talk about now. Scott, my guy, did you really need to join he the San Diego really police force last year? Like, did we really need that selfie? Coming did he out? really? Yeah, it was like two years ago. He's like got a swearing in thing. It's, it's uh, a bummer. And again, I, I, th- we talked about it when we did our Blink songs. My favorite Blink song of all, all time, "Man Overboard," is about Scott. It's, it's about as much insight as we'll ever get to his removal, uh, from the band. At the time, they said he was going away to college. That was like the cliche everyone would say in a band. It sounds like he was kicked out for his alcoholism. Um, oh really? That, that seems to be yeah. If you read between the lines, that seems to be what has happened. All the way to becoming a San Diego police officer like three years ago. That's the that's wild. That's the path that Scott. What a, what a weird uh, what a weird life. Uh, you you drummed on Dude Ranch and now you're a patrolman. That's weird. That's so insane. He played really fast. I like his drum style, but Travis. I actually prefer his style, but recognize that Travis is the better musician. Yeah, and I wonder too. Like they probably just didn't. It's not, I don't think they like deferred to him much. You know what I mean? Like, I, I wonder how much influence he really had over their sound. If it was just uh, Mark and Tom at the time. And again, bringing in, uh, bringing in Travis and, and they talk about how like Travis changed their whole mindset on just like a, on a real conceptual basis. Like he, they said, like he thought he always brought a hip hop attitude, even with like their imagery and all that. So, like he just had that's that racist. He had that sort of, um, he had that sort of just knowledge. Uh, he thought about music from that perspective of sure. how they would how they would market how they would monetize like all of those sort of things he always well, he, he of, did bring a different you know perspective to it yeah, i mean and, that's and, exactly what he brought the, yeah, talent. And, and because mark and tom like i said they really were just the you know they were kind of second generation punk rockers right they're they're guys of that age that are growing up with the uh a little bit of the 80s stuff they were a little well, bit younger than some of these other guys so they liked like the pennywises and the no effects as we're still even though basically they're same age they were still old enough band to them to, to look up to them you know I feel like uh, Travis Barker might have been like the Ritalin that calmed them down and got them focused on what they needed to do. Because can you imagine mm. what their career would have been like had he not joined the band? And yeah, they'd, let's say, let's... They'd, they'd been like gutter mouth or something like that. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or Lagwagon maybe. Well, they're not as good musicians as Lagwagon. Yeah, I, I well, think Lagwagon Travis would... is. I mean, I mean, they they certainly looked up to Lagwagon, like they like so during right. Dude Ranch. I tell the story the whole time. They were they were opening for Lagwagon, and Joey Cape was like, um, "I think you guys need to leave this tour and go on your own. You're you're selling like, you know, because Dude crazy. Ranch, Dude Ranch was successful. That that's the thing about that. Yes, like, they're not. Dude, David is a huge song that busted on their uh, like. They just came into this this major label signing like. They were on uh, they, they, the album. Everyone was very happy with Dude Ranch. It's not like it's not like one of those things like, oh, they bombed on the major and they had to pull it together. It was just they did well enough to, quite frankly, earn a budget for their next album as well. To, That's awesome. to do this. Now, nobody just nobody had the idea that this album, I think, would be as big as it was because, again, Dude Ranch was good, but it, it was still it was still a punk rock album by a punk rock band. And if you weren't Green Day selling Dookie or what the Offspring were doing, you just didn't really. It was still really wasn't even really like a major career, like a sustainable. You're gonna do this your whole life kind of thing. Obviously, Enema just changed all of that for for Blink and for for a lot of other bands actually. Let's let's wrap this conversation up with the the age old question: mm-hmm. Is this the best? pop punk album of all time is blink 182 enema of the state the best punk rock pop punk album of all time and it's a very specific question hmm so i don't know if it's like definitive yes um but like i also don't know what else am i putting in that slot like if i'm not if i'm not gonna put right. that i i like then i would have to put dookie which i don't even think is representative of the of the of why of why you would say enema is the greatest of all time you know what i mean so then i, I Wait, think what? so what, what i'm saying is like i if i if i don't say it's enema and say it's dookie that kind of discounts everything that would have come after because a lot of what came after is yes very much influenced and inspired by dookie but a lot more of it sounds like enema of the state i would say right i think the the, the point that i was trying to make was is that it was a specific question and it was like is it the best pop punk album 
not so much is it the most important because I do think that those are two very different questions. And I also think that there's probably different answers for each one. I think that Blink is the better album. I think Dookie is probably the more important one because it was the launch pad for all of it, including Blink-182. Uh, so it's kind of a stupid trick question, if you will. Um, but, you know, what's funny is that when you get down to it, the two best pop punk albums of all time, five years apart, explain to me why they both have to do with butts. <laughs> I've thought about this so much. Why is one called Dookie and then one is called Enema? Like, like what are we doing here? Is it simply because that's the nature of pop punk? Or is it because it's the universe cracking a joke on us? I, I, dude, oh, it's so God. weird that those are the best two albums in this genre that they're fight. They're, they're both in the '90s and they're both booty albums. Like, like what are we you doing? Can't, like you can't acceptably say their name in in like uh, acceptable society. I know it's great, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's so strange. They're so I think, immature. I think you answered Dookie, it in your declaration. It has, it has less to do with pop punk. It's the '90s. This is just that that. That's the, a good point. It's just the the nineties are vulgar. Like the nineties are a very vulgar <clears throat> time, um, and so like everything is everything's Bart Simpson. Everything's a fart joke. Everything is kind of like that That's a in great the nineties. So I think I and I think the pop punk was like a very much. And I've never thought about this, but pop punk is very much a nineties expression of culture in a lot of ways. Yeah, like pop it punk really, really is. Feels like the nineties, even like the pop punk yes. in the two thousands. It's it, it just still feels, feels it's, like the nineties. Still a very nineties. Phil, so I, I just think that's what it is. It's like the '90s were just all about like making jokes and laughing out loud at those jokes. Which Blink One Eighty Two as a band, very much that is their concept of making the jokes and everyone laughing along um, at the jokes. So I think uh, I think that was just in the. I don't know. We had the Butthole Surfers back in the day. We had a lot of. Uh... Shout out Texas, bro. <laughs> They're from here. <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna put up a poll, and I'm gonna put up two separate polls. I'm gonna wait a couple of days in between them. And I'm going to see if anybody gives me any crap. And I'm going to put up uh, which one is the better album. And then I'm going to put up which one is the more important album. I'm going to see if I get any kind of dialogue in there. Because I do think that it's... Honestly, I, I think on when you ask the question, I think my initial like snap answer is like, oh, Blink's the better album, Green is the more important one. But the more you're talking, there's a lot more influence coming from this Blink album than I, I initially kind of registered. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, influence is a little bit different time period. I think, like yeah. again, the because uh, I, I I think of the the two thousands pop punk, all just sounds so much like uh, that's why he's made the newfound glory point. Like I don't know that newfound glory sounds quite like newfound glory if Anima doesn't come out. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. That's what, a, I mean that's a really good point. <laughs> It, it, from a, from a from a perspective of the influence and also the perspective of they were on the same label, so Mark is kind of hanging out with them, um, right? Uh, as well, uh, yeah. It, it's weird though because I I felt like the influence and and probably similar to Green Day, it didn't really get birthed though till like people of my generation and younger actually started making music. I've I've noticed that. Um, That's a good point. It's a lot of these bands that are like the 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 kid bands of the when we were young. Those are the band. Yeah. Those are the guys like bowing down. To this album and kind of talking about it in the in the way we are so i think it did have and not like it didn't have immediate impact i think the the both dookie and enema had the thing of like a lot of under talented bands got signed because those albums were big so it's like we can we yes. can replicate that um and we can do that i think so from that perspective i don't know how influential that was because it was in a it was in a, a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of other stuff but you look years later all these guys some of them who who stayed with punk rock and went to other genres they all kind of cite this album as a hugely influential album from their youth because it was just a huge album again it was it was ever like i, I talked about like i remember my aunt having a copy of the cassette my aunt knows nothing about punk rock that or is anything so weird like that um it was very well that's very i mean that's prevalent. how that's how there was a handful of records like that Blink, Green Day's Dookie, Offspring Smash was like that, where people that didn't care or know anything about punk had a copy of it. Uh, I do think that those are the two at the top of the genre, and everything else, I would say, is pretty far behind those two records, though. And uh, I do find it a little bit odd that after all these years of not really caring about Dookie, that the last like six months I've actually come to be a pretty big fan of that record. It's really weird. I'm glad they're playing it in its entirety now because I was really dreading that. 
I really yeah. was sincerely dreading it. Now I've come around to where I'm like kind of stoked I can film it in its entirety and and like revisit that at some point. But because uh, I've had to do the review on the channel, we did we covered it a couple times, and then I got a cassette tape at my store, so I used that as the uh, tester tape for my new stereo. So listen to it like front to back twice in one day, and I've just been listening to a lot of Green Day, and uh, it's just started to grow on me after like thirty years of. Uh, uh, uh- a bit of connective tissue, though. You had Jerry Finn mixed. Do- he didn't produce Dookie. Rob Cavallo did, but he mixed Dookie, and then he produced Edema of the States. So there's a bit of a connective tissue between those two albums. I bet well. he had something to do with the title of both albums. That bastard. Oh, he my goodness. Was- it's funny. You see photos of him, and again, he's passed on. He looks like the most just, like, generic dude. But, like, all the albums he produced were nothing but fart jokes, as you were saying. So this guy must have had That's a hell hilarious. of a humor. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny, bro. The fact when I realized that that one was that and the other was said so like the same exact title, I was like, "Dude, that's the universe coming together and just going." Like it's just so random. Like, uh, I would love to know if 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 there was a reason behind the name of either of those besides it just being like I don't I don't know why Green Day called their record Dookie, but I yeah, I think I, I have an idea why Enema was called that. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and again, talk about a relic of the time period. Like, how stupid was it? Like, like, thank God the album was good. How stupid was it to name your album off a take off of a movie? That wasn't, that was like popular, but like Enemy Wait. of the State, the, that's, oh. that's what it was a take off of. Remember the yeah. Will Smith, Gene Hackman movie in like the late. Wait, 80s? really? Yeah, Enemy of the State. So then Enemy of the State was just a quick play off. Yeah, but of that's that. like a, that's like a term that not necessarily from the movie. No, but that, right? term, that, that term was popularized in the late night. Like, it, this okay. this album was well at least that's Whoa. how I always took it was a direct reference to that movie being so popular. Oh at man, the time. I don't know. That's crazy. It might it, you might be right. I've never thought about that. I do know that their other working title was the Diarrhea of Anne Frank, which I personally <laughs> prefer. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and again, though, with the booty reference, dude, like yeah. these guys have yeah. some like butt fetishes and stuff. And I'm not kink shaming, dude. Do your thing, fellas. Do your thing. But uh, the diarrhea of Anne Frank might be the best <laughs> title of all time if that had come to fruition. That's <laughs> repulsive and offensive and hilarious. Like, I'm, I'm in, dude. I'm in. But yeah, you could you couldn't have called it that. That that would have crossed a, a line. I think people would have been pretty upset by that one. Well, you people do don't... that, and it just stays punk rock, right? Like it never like that's a, that's a good the state was hard was is, was hard enough to to. And again, another thing that people had to say in polite society is you had to say <laughs> yeah yeah that's funny man dude what a great episode this was so next week we're doing weezer blue album and u.s bombs the world uh honestly you couldn't get further apart in musical style but uh i, I think it's the only podcast ever that's going to be bookended by Dwayne peters and rivers cuomo like rivers I don't know. Cuomo. <laughs> it well, might the be the only podcast doing... ever the following week, we're doing uh, Operation Ivy because it's hitting 35 years like that same week. Um, actually, I think it's hitting 35 years like a week before that even. So uh, I'll be doing live streams for Operation Ivy and Blink soon. I'm really kind of looking forward to that. That's a, that's a lot of fun for me. But um, yeah, dude, we got some some good stuff coming. I don't have anything planned for after that, but that's, a, that's two really great. We've had a lot of really, really good, strong episodes in the past couple of months. I'm... Very pleased with the direction that this is going. Yeah, a lot of bands that are very like closely related to that have very like interconnected fates that we keep. Oh, dude, our our, kinda, our audience has been to. loving this, dude. Like, look at our numbers; they've been way better the last six months than they were the previous six months. Yeah, I feel like in some ways, if you just like like those those six months you were talking about, if you break down our show, there is a bit of like these narratives of like punk history that sort of we're we're sort of teasing that out on this show. And where does this band fit into? All the stuff right. that that we're talking about—that's kind of the direction we've we've settled on. I've gotten uh, I've I've finally figured out where I'm going with this, dude. I, I'm I'm really happy. I, I got a, I have a direction, a plan, and I'm uh, literally at the beginning stages of execution. I'm very very excited. I think we're gonna. I mean, dude, I literally have Dan Frampton talking to me about coming on the show. Like that's, that's fucking so cool, nuts, yeah. dude. That's so wild, dude. Like, and I'm and I'm fully about it, bro. I talked to him a bunch of times now. He's been super freaking cool, man. Like, I owe that guy a, a pretty stiff apology, man. Like, I I I don't have to understand his channel to not be a dick. Like, I, it doesn't matter. Like, I was just being a turd, which is fine. You're entitled to do that if you want to mm-hmm. critique somebody and be a shithead about it. You're you're allowed to do so. I just uh, I feel like maybe I I, I shouldn't have 
I should have just like not cared. I should have just been like, okay, I don't get it. On to the next. Although, had I not been being a shitty turd about it, he would never have said anything to me. So I guess, you know. But uh, pay, yeah, I was on. For you. Yeah, dude, I I was on his live stream, and then he was on one of mine. It was like really, honestly, kind of cool, man. People were like, "What the fuck? This is weird." <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it was fun, man. But any closing thoughts before we get out of here for the night? No, just uh, fun, fun albums oh. to celebrate. Agreed. Very, very much agreed. Uh, I'm a little sad that you won't ever listen to the Donnas again, but <laughs> <laughs> um, what when you have schools when school's out is our are we still doing nine o'clock? Is that is that okay? Uh, I was gonna tell you today it could switch like or like we have the, we'd have some flexibility with it switching. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah, okay. Let me know what you need to do, and uh, I guess the fellas on the other show we just stick to eight o'clock over there, but I think that they're flexible too, so. Yeah, whatever. We do whatever we need to do. It's all good, man. I'm pretty flexible myself. So I just I just like to have a plan though. I don't like to come into things not knowing what's going on because I, I I freak out. Yeah, for sure. Awesome, dude. Well, thank you everybody for hanging out with us. If you're over here on uh YouTube, man, thanks for watching my ugly mug spaz out and not be able to focus unless I'm fidgeting. And uh if you're on Spotify, just thank you so much for listening. I'm trying to figure out a way to get the show monetized over there, and it is incredibly hard. So um i don't know that it'll ever happen to be honest but uh i'm working on it seeing if i can figure it out because you know yeah that does unfortunately matter uh rob don't hang up quite yet everybody else i'll see y'all next uh week thanks for hanging out have a nice day peace